To cancel or not to cancel? That is the question. Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the Tesla Cybertruck and whether it will work as an RV tow vehicle. As many of you may recall, several years ago, we plunked down 100 bucks and pre-ordered our very own Tesla Cybertruck. For the uninitiated, the Tesla Cybertruck is an all electric pickup truck that has the most polarizing vehicle design in history. When Elon Musk initially unveiled the Cybertruck, I thought it must have been some sort of prototype or joke. But the more I looked at it, oddly, the more I liked it. If you are like me and you grew up watching Star Trek and playing Nintendo, then you may kind of like the Cybertruck because it looks like something that is more from the future than from the past. Cybertruck does not look like a traditional pickup truck. And I know many of you in our audience will deem this the ugliest vehicle to ever travel an American highway. I get it. This truck design is not going to appeal to everyone. Some people are going to hate it. Others are going to love it. It's certainly going to be an iconic presence on the road over the coming decade. So when Cybertruck was unveiled in 2019, I was impressed enough to at least reserve our spot in line. And I have waited. In the meantime, we have had a pandemic, we've had supply chain issues, and Tesla has had a lot of trouble bringing the Cybertruck to market because it is truly an innovative vehicle. In this video, we're going to talk about what we know now about the Cybertruck because in November of 2023, the first Cybertrucks began being delivered to consumers. So now we actually know what we can truly expect with the Cybertruck. If you look at the actual production version of Cybertruck, it doesn't really look that different from what was unveiled in 2019. It has retained, of course, the same angular stainless steel design. More on that in a moment. All the dimensions, I believe, were shrunk around 5% just to produce a truck body that would actually fit inside most American garages and presumably parking spaces. There's a lot of technology in Cybertruck that makes it a really unique vehicle in the marketplace. First of all, let's talk about that stainless steel exoskeleton. All of the Cybertrucks will come with a stainless steel exterior. Now, that exterior can be cosmetically wrapped with vinyl wrap in either white or black from the factory. But as ordered, you're typically going to get it in an unpainted stainless steel finish. That steel is a special Tesla created alloy that's quite similar to what SpaceX uses to build its rockets. It's literally bulletproof. And Cybertruck is unique in that the exterior of the vehicle is the stiffest, hardest portion of the truck. The toughest material is on the outside. Whereas with most pickup trucks, there is a very tough frame. The truck is constructed around that frame. And actually, the skin of most pickup trucks is very sensitive and vulnerable to damage. Not so with this stainless steel that's being used with Cybertruck. In fact, the stainless steel exoskeleton is literally bulletproof. And yes, a video has been produced showing the Cybertruck being riddled with bullets. And the bullets do not penetrate the stainless steel, which is, I believe, three millimeters thick. I know Joe Rogan attempted to pierce the side of a Cybertruck using some sort of uh, arrow because he's a bow hunter. Me. <laughs> and apparently the Cybertruck is also aero proof. So in some ways, the stainless steel actually dictated the angular design of the Cybertruck. This material is so hard that it really can't be easily shaped into smooth curves. In fact, it's so hard, the stainless steel cannot be stamped. 
the panels must be laser cut and bent. And that's why you don't really see any curves on the Cybertruck. It's a lot of straight lines. Now, in many ways, I like the idea of having a stainless steel vehicle. It will be very difficult to dent or damage a stainless steel panel on a Cybertruck. I would imagine that these panels will be pretty much impervious to rock dings and dents and so forth. With that said, if you do dent one of these panels or damage one of these panels, they're going to be very difficult to repair. Yeah, I don't know that this is something you could just take down to your local auto body shop and have them repair a significantly damaged stainless steel panel. It's a tough material, but it's also a tough material to work with. So we will see how that pans out. But overall, I kind of like the idea of having a rugged stainless steel exoskeleton on a truck that might be sitting outside exposed to the elements and it will be basically impervious to those elements. The glass windows of Cybertruck are said to be extremely tough. Perhaps they are baseball proof, but they are not bulletproof. So as Elon says, you're going to have to duck. But you already really knew about the stainless steel. One of the great revelations in recent months about Cybertruck has concerned the electrical system inside the truck. It is a 48 volt electrical system. Now, I am no electrical engineer, but it's my understanding that basically every other vehicle produced in the past several decades has been using a 12 volt electrical system, which haven't changed that much from what was available in the 1970s. Cybertruck has gone to a 48 volt electrical system, and this has unleashed a number of electronic advantages the most notable of which is steer by wire. Cybertruck will have an electronic steer by wire system, which basically means the wheels will turn based upon electronic inputs from the steering wheel. There is no mechanical connection between the steering wheel and the wheels. And what that has allowed is four wheel steering. The rear wheels of Cybertruck will actually steer and they will rotate, I believe, between three and 10 degrees in addition to the normal rotation of the front wheels. The upshot of this is the Cybertruck is supposed to drive and handle more like a sports car than a pickup truck. And it actually has a much tighter turning radius than a typical pickup truck. You know, when we turn our F-250 Seymour, I sometimes joke about turning around a battleship because old Seymour does not have the tightest turning radius. Well, Cybertruck, because all four wheels will rotate with steering, is said to have a really tight turning radius. I think I saw it could be as tight as 17 feet, whereas our truck is more like 27 or 28 feet. So a tighter turning radius is actually a benefit not only in just driving and handling and maneuvering around town, but it could also be a benefit when towing. I can recall, for example, when we were towing our rig up the Alaska Highway, I was able to perform a U-turn on the Alaska Highway using our F-250, but it was close. I had to do that a couple of times because I saw some bears along the side of the highway and I wanted to turn our entire hitched rig around and go back and look for the grizzly bears. Well, it will be much easier to perform that sort of task if you're driving a cyber truck because of the tighter turning radius. Now, the 48 volt electrical system has some other massive advantages. And the most important one for RV owners will be the power share option. As I understand it, Cybertruck supports bi-directional charging. In other words, it can receive a charge from outside sources, but it can also deliver a charge. And in the bed of the truck, apparently there are several outlets to which you can plug up and use your Cybertruck as basically a gigantic battery pack that's delivering electricity to wherever you need it. Now, for those of you who have a Tesla Powerwall in your home and maybe even have a Tesla solar roof, you can see where Cybertruck could become an important part of the entire off-the-grid package in that you can use it as a battery bank to help power your home. Now, if you're doing that, then you're cycling through the batteries much faster. And I would think the electronic wear and tear, shall we say, on the batteries would be much greater. I think the Cybertruck would probably be more likely to be used as a power source 
in times of emergency or if the power grid goes down. But, you know, I have heard there is an economy developing by which you could have electricity stored in your Tesla Powerwall or presumably in your Cybertruck, and you could share that electricity back to the grid if you're plugged up to the grid and basically be compensated for electricity that you are supplying to the grid. So over the long term, I think this really opens up some really cool, interesting possibilities. I mean, imagine that your vehicles in the form of Cybertruck are actually plugged into your house and even delivering power to your house. And from an RV camping standpoint, if you're at your campsite, you could go to your truck and use it to power appliances and electronic devices and perhaps even your RV. All Cybertrucks will come with an integrated power tonneau cover. I personally think this is really smart. I've seen all of the pickup trucks coming out of Detroit for years that come with no tonneau cover, and I never could really figure out why Ford and GM and Chevrolet didn't provide tonneau covers integrated into their designs from the factory, because I think most people would like to have a factory integrated tonneau cover. Well, in Cybertruck, you have it. It's a power tonneau cover. You will want that tonneau cover closed most of the time because it will streamline the aerodynamics of the truck and improve your range around 15%. More about range in a moment. And due to the design of Cybertruck and the sort of angular design of the rear bed, if you have that tonneau cover closed, it will block all visibility out the rear window. Now, those of you who've ever towed any sort of RV are not going to be upset by that because I'm accustomed to having no visibility out the rear window, frankly. I'm accustomed to using my side mirrors. All Cybertrucks will have an adjustable air suspension, and they have about 17 inches of ground clearance beneath the truck, so they should be good for off-roading. Cybertruck will have side mirrors that are removable, and if you choose to remove the side mirrors, you can get by apparently just by cameras. The truck is equipped with many cameras, including cameras, of course, that are rear-facing, so if you have that tonneau cover closed, then you'll just use the camera view on the large center screen display inside the Cybertruck. There's not a whole lot, I think, to say about the Cybertruck interior based upon what I've seen. Like most Tesla designs, it appears to be very Spartan. Something about it that I find a little bit strange, there's no traditional speedometer or tachometer or anything like that in front of the driver. Everything is apparently done through that large central screen display that's in the center of the truck. I don't know that I really like that, to be honest. I kind of prefer old-fashioned gauges, but that's just me. With the steering wheel, they are going with kind of a squircle design, a square circle. It's not a yoke, and it's not a steering wheel. It's sort of an odd-shaped design that I think I could live with. I think I do like it better than the yoke that they were testing for a while with Cybertruck. The roof of the Cybertruck is a huge sheet of the tough Cybertruck glass, and I know we would really enjoy the visibility out of this glass roof because we currently have no sunroof whatsoever in our truck. This huge glass roof will be a great advantage when you're touring scenic areas. I will point out that Cybertruck has no door handles. And some people say this is for aerodynamic purposes. It creates smoother airflow along the side of the truck and presumably extends the range a little bit. I personally would prefer to see a physical mechanical door handle. I'm just a little bit skeptical about having no door handle on the truck. Call me old fashioned, I'd rather see a handle, but it is what it is. So we now know there will be three trim levels of Cybertruck. There will be a single motor rear wheel drive version that will not be available until at least the year 2025. In 2024, two versions will be available, a mid-range two motor version and a top of the line beast mode three motor version. Let's talk about price. Sadly, 
the prices for Cybertruck have gone way up from what was originally announced. Back in 2019, Tesla was promising a $39,000 Cybertruck. That's not gonna happen. The cheapest Cybertruck will cost $59,999, something like that. So basically $60,000 for the entry level, $80,000 for the mid-range, and $100,000 for the top of the line. Now, the mid-range actually does not exceed $80,000. It will be $79,999 or something like that. And that is relevant because apparently there's some sort of $7,500 federal EV tax credit. And if the MSRP of the vehicle comes in below the $80,000 figure, then the truck will qualify for that credit. I'm not sure yet whether the top of the line $100,000 cyber truck will qualify for that federal tax credit. You accountants out there can maybe chime in and about whether that qualifies as simply an additional trim level on a less expensive truck body, if you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, costs are much, much higher, which you know is not a huge shocker based upon what has happened with inflation over the past couple of years. You know, costs for everything have gone up. It's not a big surprise that the cost of the Cybertruck has gone up. We're in the Yukon. $97 of diesel for the truck, $12 of premium for the generator. So let's talk about range for a moment, as this will be uniquely of interest to you RV people out there. The entry-level Cybertruck will have a range of around 250 miles, not towing. The all-wheel drive dual-motor Cybertruck will have a range of 340 miles, while the all-wheel drive tri-motor Cyber Beast will have a lower range of 320 miles. So if you have the beast mode truck, you can go zero to 60 in a ridiculous 2.6 seconds, but your overall range is actually lower than the dual motor truck, which by the way is no slouch. It goes zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds. Both of those trims can tow 11,000 pounds. The single motor rear wheel drive cyber truck has a tow rating of 7,500 pounds. And all of these trucks have a bed capacity of around 2,500 pounds. So for a minute here, for you RV people out there, let's look at the mid-range Cybertruck. 80,000 bucks, and it has a stated range of 340 miles, not towing. Towing, you can expect probably half of the stated range. This is based, of course, upon what you're towing, how heavy it is, how aerodynamic it is. It's going to fluctuate just a bit. Where are you towing it? What time of year are you towing it? Is it hot outside or is it cold outside? EVs get much lower range if the temperatures are low. So if it's cold and you're in the dead of winter and you're towing a 10,000 pound fifth wheel, good luck. You might not even get 50% of range. So in the best case scenario, you could tow 340 miles divided by two, 170 miles of range. Oh, but wait a minute, RV owners. Let's not draw conclusions too quickly. Tesla unveiled another surprise recently, and that is a range extender pack. For a mere $16,000, you can purchase a big external battery pack that is designed to fit in the bed of the pickup truck. This battery pack will consume about one third of the bed of the truck, which I believe is a six and a half foot long bed, by the way. But it's all designed, of course, to smoothly integrate with Cybertruck and extend the truck's driving range by around 130 miles. So if we take the best case scenario of the dual motor Cybertruck that is equipped with the range extender battery pack, we will have a range of around 470 miles not towing. So assuming you're towing a heavy load, let's just for convenience, chop that range in half and we're left at 235 miles of range when towing 
in a best case scenario. And that's assuming the $80,000 cyber truck that is equipped with the $16,000 range extender battery pack. So is 235 miles of range enough for you? Truthfully, it would be enough for us, assuming, of course, there were superchargers and places to recharge the truck that are distributed well throughout the country, because we rarely tow for more than 200 miles consecutively without taking some sort of rest break. So from that standpoint, it doesn't really seem unreasonable to me in most circumstances. If you had truly 235 miles of range, most of the time that would work for us. Now, there are some parts of the country, I'm looking at you, South Texas, where 235 miles of range might still make you a little bit nervous if you're crossing those desert areas. With our old dinosaur of a diesel truck. With a full tank of diesel, we get about 330 miles of range while towing. So old Seymour would outperform the Cybertruck in terms of range when towing a heavy load. Something else for RV owners to consider, and I frankly haven't seen too much talk about this issue, concerns recharging the Cybertruck when you are hitched up with a full RV rig. If you really have to unhitch the truck in order to recharge it, that is a big problem to me. In fact, that's more of a problem maybe than the limited range because as you know, unhitching and rehitching a travel trailer is work. It's a process and it slows everything down. You know, we try to avoid unhitching whenever we can certainly on travel days. It's my understanding that there will be drive-through recharge stations, and so there really needs to be a lot more drive-through recharge stations so that you can recharge a Cybertruck without having to unhitch whatever's being towed. There also may be extension cords that will be put on the market that would allow you to recharge your truck without having to unhitch. But that is a big lifestyle issue to me as an RV owner. You know, when we took our big road trip to Alaska, we went probably two or three weeks without even unhitching because we were moving every day going up the Alaska highway and we just didn't want to unhitch. We would drive during the day, park, stay hitched at night, and then get up the next day and it was just more convenient to be able to hit the road without having to worry about hitching up the rig. You travel trailer people out there know what I'm talking about. Back to the original question, to cancel or not to cancel? You know, I've gone in and looked at our Cybertruck order on the Tesla website, and they don't tell you exactly where you stand in line. But based upon my mathematical estimate, I think we're at roughly position number 493,000. In other words, there are about a half a million people who are in line before us to purchase a Cybertruck. Now, a lot of those people, I'm sure, are going to cancel their orders. And so in reality, we're probably closer to being able to order than that. So for the moment, I have not canceled our order. We are still in line. I'm still learning more about the truck. You know, everything I've learned about it so far has been pretty consistent with my initial impressions. I haven't seen anything that would necessarily be a complete deal killer, although I have a hard time really justifying the cost or the expense. At this point, we have over 230,000 miles on our Ford F-250 Seymour, and you know, the truck is showing its age. It was kind of a dated design to begin with when we purchased it. I'm sure that going from our truck to something like a Cybertruck or something more modern would really be a leap into the future. But I do have a hard time justifying that cost because we do have a functioning, working truck. To me, a truck is a tool that you use to get a job done. And really, I originally purchased the truck with the specific intention of towing our Airstream travel trailer and it has done a good job at that. You know, I saw a graphic showing all the different ways that people use their trucks. And truthfully, most people drive no more than around 40 miles a day. And most people place their trucks under very light duty. 
most of the time, most guys are just riding around town in their truck. They're not really using the storage capacity in the bed that much, and they're not really towing. I think in terms of having a great get around town type of vehicle, I think Cybertruck looks amazing. It would probably work well for most people most of the time. We, however, have a very specific use case scenario of towing a heavy load for very long distances. And ironically, sadly, that's probably where Cybertruck is at its weakest, where it falls short. So it remains to be seen. You know, we do have a unique situation here in that we make videos and share them with you guys about our RV travels and adventures. And so I might have a unique reason to buy a Cybertruck that you might not. In other words, I would kind of like to get my hands on a Cybertruck to shoot some pretty cool and interesting videos. Whether or not it will work for us, I still have my doubts. Now, those of you who are thinking about purchasing a Cybertruck and possibly reselling it, I've heard some talk that Tesla may contractually bind the original purchaser so that they cannot resell the truck within the first year. I don't know if for sure that's going to be the case. You know, in my case, I could see buying the Cybertruck, trying it with our travel trailer, trying it on a, a few trips to see if it would work for us. And if it did not work, I would just resell the truck and try something different. But I think Tesla really doesn't want people doing that, or especially they don't want people just buying the trucks and then flipping them to turn a quick profit. That I can understand, but you know, if the truck won't work for our purposes, then I would want the right to be able to resell it, of course. Something else to finally consider is the possibility of new EV-friendly RVs coming onto the market. I mean, for example, I've seen some new travel trailer designs that include propulsion motors basically in the travel trailer so that the travel trailer itself is equipped with a huge battery bank and motors at the wheels that propel the trailer down the highway when it's being towed. So they act as sort of a, an assist mechanism to extend the range when towing. And I think if you paired a cyber truck with one of those futuristic design travel trailers, then you might really have something that could really work. So anyway, I have decided to keep our name on the list to potentially purchase a cyber truck. And, you know, we'll see what happens when we finally have our number called and we have that opportunity. What do you think? Do you guys think cyber truck is a lot of hype and a joke and won't really work? Or do you think this is the future. Do you think we should maybe look into getting a different type of travel trailer? Chime in, post a comment. Let me know what you think about Cybertruck. At the moment, we've decided not to cancel. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time. And by the way, thanks to all of you out there who have tuned in and viewed our various college town tour videos that we produced this fall as we traveled across the country and back visiting different college towns and campuses around the country, going to some football games and learning more about each area and their unique traditions. We still have a couple more videos coming in the college town tour series. So stay tuned for that. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Sean. This has been yet another episode of Long Long Honeymoon where we say lo loho.